Hey, what's good, y'all? My name is Chico Chi. I use pronouns like he or they. Thanks for having me.
work. You see me do me dirt, 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 dirt. There's something about that work, 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 work. When you walk a la 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 la, me no care if it matters. Join me, I deserve. No time to have you lurk. Just one night 
eyes and just looking in your eyes You know I'm looking for more And you're what I've been praying for This kind of love don't come around like this I'm not one to play around like this I'm so real And I love how it feels I love it when we slowly sway I love it when we think the same One 
outside Waited a while and took your time You don't know how impressing Your curiosity was to me It was the fourth day of July Looked in my eyes and saw that I
So we are coming with a force. Yeah. Blessings we are reap and we course in our pool. But we not rise and boast. So we give thanks like we need it the most. We have to give thanks like we really supposed to be thankful. Blessings are all from life. It's time to hit reset on what we know about HIV. HIV and AIDS are not the same thing. There is no cure for HIV, but you can live a healthy life. Treatment helps make it possible. Who should get tested for HIV? Everyone. There are now more ways than ever to protect yourself, protect the people you care about, and help prevent the spread of HIV. Testing, prevention, and treatment add up to stopping the virus. Talk to a healthcare provider and get reset at helpstopthevirus.com. Watch the videos, share the information. It's HIV education for everyone because there's something everyone can do.
welcome to the 20th Hunger Games. No. Oh, the annual purge. Oh, no. 20th anniversary of the Asian and Pacific Islander LGBTQ Pride and Pavilion virtual stage. Welcome to my mansion. My name is Era Amaya, your miss with an ED. Miss Gappa, 2017. Oh my God, it's been a long time. A little bit about me. Pronouns I use when I'm in drag is she. But if you see me on the streets with my boy hair, you can call me he. All right, and a little bit more about me. I am actually a drag queen on the side, but at daytime, sometimes at nighttime, I am a nurse. So for all of you watching at home, enjoying your social distancing while you're watching here with us, wash your hands. And if you have to go outside, wear your mask. Be like one of those queens. I like to keep it on, please. So I would like to introduce our second MC for our virtual stream, Jay. So Jay is a gender non-conforming South Asian asylee who is practicing the art of storytelling from trans centers of gravity. In November 2019, Jay presented the world premiere of Mahabharata, a solo telling of a great Indian epic adapted by Gita Reddy, a South Asian American playwright where the retelling intentionally presents a non-cisgendered male perspective that has otherwise dominated the conversation of thousands of Hindu years. Hashtag trans lives matter. For more information, check out this link below. Right there, awesome. Hi Jay, how are you? Doing well. Happy Pride, everyone. My name is Jay, and I am super excited to be emceeing today's event. Next, I would like to introduce our third MC for the evening, Anjali Rimi. Anjali Rimi Koka, pronouns she, they, thrives in a community, showing up as a leader, driving accountability for trans justice. Keeping connected to her Indian Asian roots, she co-founded and serves as the president for Parivar Bay Area the first South Asian TGNCI-centered queer trans organization. Anjali serves on the board for San Francisco Pride and also as the Community Affairs Committee Chair. Anjali Rumi holds an MBA and has been in corporate America for over 20 years. She is an effective facilitator and a consultant with diversity journeys, holding workshops across many inclusion topics. Hi, Anjali. Hello, Jay. Hello, everybody. And my name is Anjali. We are very honored to be your MCs tonight. If you're wondering why our backgrounds are all in emerald, it is because emerald is the jewelry to celebrate and a gift given for the 20th anniversary. So thank you, Era, for letting us into your emerald castle. Uh, Anjali, it's not just the background, it's the foreground. You're wearing the Emerald Castle today. <laughs> oh, true. I didn't even notice that. Yes. Well, we are so proud to wear the Emerald, and we are even more proud that we can continue to provide the space and celebrate the intersectionality of being API and LGBTQ. It is the 20th year of the API LGBTQ Pride and Pavilion stage. And it has been a place for our API community and all of our allies. And this year, we are taking a different approach and being with the world and in still celebrating Pride Month and doing it all virtually. We have a great lineup for all of you tonight with so many performances by amazing folks. These include Syndicate Dance Team, Groove Against the Machine with Groove Generations and Scroll Friends. Moga Fapalate, my daughter, my Gappa daughter. Hello. And also my other Gappa daughter, Miss Shumai. Parivar Bay Area. House of Teas. Hey, my sisters. And House of Sierra, Joey Diamond, and Maddie B. In these unprecedented times, We'd like to use our platform to highlight an important matter in light of what is going on currently. Therefore, we've also invited a few members from the Black community, such as 
Monique Campbell, Pearl Teeves, and Keith Bell to discuss their thoughts and opinions. So stay tuned. We sure have a great program for all of you. Now let's get this show started. A big part of Pride Month includes reflecting and acknowledging our history as a community. Let's take a trip down memory lane and take a look at the history of the API Pride Pavilion and Stage. As you all know, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the API Stage. If any of you have been to the API Stage during Pride Weekend, I have, you know how much of a fantastic show it is taking place on the stage. Behind a fantastic show, a spectacular human being, Tita Ida. Those two words, Tita Ida, has been spearheading the API Pride Pavilion stage with the Pride Committee and the SF Community Health Center for the last two decades. As someone who greatly revers and looks up to Tita Ida, all I can say is she's a selfless leader that has been serving this community for over 20 years. I vividly remember at one of the Pride board meetings, which I'm honored to serve on the board with Tita, she mentioned, you just look like me and the way you think when I thought way back then. And that was such an inspiration for me to know that I could be a leader like her. She is inclusive, she's filled with empathy, and she is one who drives to get us results and for us to be able to live better lives. Thank you so much, Tida, on behalf of the API community on the San Francisco Bay Area LGBTQ community. We really see you and we respect you. Thank you. Hi everyone, this is Tita Ida with the San Francisco Community Health Center, formerly known as API Wellness. And my pronouns are she, her, and hers. <laughs> well, I'm here to welcome each and every one of you for this very special presentation that our agency is putting together. As you all know, June is Pride Month here in San Francisco, and we are part of the big celebration of San Francisco Pride. We host a venue, which is the Asian and Pacific Islander LGBT Pride Stage and Pavilion. And guess what? It's going on for the past 20 years. So it's the anniversary, 20th anniversary this time. And uh, we want to make it special and we want to make sure that we continue for the next 20 years, you know. However, these are unprecedented times that are happening here in our country, in our city. And we want to be aware of that, you know. So we decided to go virtual because we want to make sure that our communities are safe, our communities are taking shelter in place if they have to, and um, we are still struggling with COVID-19, you know, it's still around, so. But um, the folks here have prepared something really very special. This is the first time we're going virtual, and we hope that you enjoy each and every moment of it. Um, we also want to make sure that we let everybody know there that as Asian and Pacific Islanders, you know, we stand in solidarity with our African American uh, brothers and sisters and siblings out there. So, you know, this is the time to be united. This is the time to be educated. And this is the time to really look deep within our souls on how we relate to each other. So, so I hope you enjoyed this presentation and I am very proud of our team who put this all together and from the bottom of my heart, happy pride and make sure that we are out there celebrating our um, being APIs. This year is very special for us here at the agency and also for San Francisco. Um, aside from the for celebrating Pride and also the 20th anniversary of the API LGBT Pride Stage and Pavilion, um, one of our community grand marshals is our CEO, which is Lance Toma. And we are very proud of all his contributions and how he led our organization to be where we are right now. So it's a pleasure and an honor for me to introduce one of my idols, you know, um, Lance Toma.
Happy Pride. I'm thrilled to be with you at this year's 20th anniversary of our API Pride stage and the 50th anniversary of San Francisco's LGBTQ Pride celebration. It's such an honor to be a community grand marshal this year, but what's been the pride and joy of my life has been leading a remarkable organization, San Francisco Community Health Center, formerly known as Asian and Pacific Islander Wellness Center. I really can't believe it's our API Pride stage's 20th anniversary. I remember working with Tita Aida on the concept in 2000. She was crystal clear from the start. I remember meeting Margaret Cho for the first time, our first celebrity performer on our API Pride stage that year. My son and I got to be right there and it was magical. I'm sure there are folks out there who were with us that year. You've all been with us over the years at some point because our API Pride stage has become legendary. It's an integral part of San Francisco Pride celebration. I know we're doing things differently this year with all of our virtual celebrations and activities for this year's Pride. I miss being out there on Polk and Golden Gate with all of you, but this year we must acknowledge all that's going on in these crazy times. COVID-19 has made us aware that we must be vigilant in our response to health pandemics. Our LGBTQ communities know full well whatever, what it means to respond to a life-threatening virus. So let's remember to take care of each other and stay safe as we celebrate Pride this year. Let's keep front and center all that's going on in our country. All the horrific acts of police brutality, of anti-black violence, too many of our trans siblings of color being murdered. It's all too much to bear and beyond comprehension. Black lives matter. This is critical and San Francisco Community Health Center is doing everything we can to support and contribute to the Black Lives Matter movement. Let's celebrate all our victories too. It's mind blowing what happened just last week with the Supreme Court and workplace protections for our LGBTQ community and with DACA. We have so much, so many reasons to be proud and hopeful. Our API queer community is resilient, powerful, compassionate, and beautiful. I absolutely love all my API queer sisters and brothers and all of us in between. Let's continue to fight. Let's continue to vote. Let's continue to show up for Black Lives Matter, and let's continue to love and support each other. Happy Pride. Hi, it's Tita Ida again. You'll be seeing me all throughout <laughs> this presentation. But, um, you know, we're coming to the one of the meats of this presentation. Um, as I said, for the past 20 years, we've been uh, producing the Asian and Pacific Islander LGBT Pride Stage and Pavilion. And um, how this came about, you know, I don't want to say it's a blur, but I think it was really more of like a call for a place for APIs to come together during Pride celebration. And at the same time, you know, we have some amazing artists and performances, performers, and that we can definitely showcase and really, you know, build our self esteem as a community. And um, we have prepared this short, well, not, not short, but it's a very special montage that we put together for you all to give you a, a glimpse of what happened in the past 20 years. So here it is. years ago, you know, when I, I was already with API Wellness that time, um, we took care of our programs, which are the H HIV prevention programs. And what I saw in the API community, especially the API MSM community, that there was really not a lot of mobilization that is happening around uh, HIV prevention. And at that time, what was really, really hot was the Spice Girls, would you believe? And um, I thought of like, hey, you know, maybe we can come up with some kind of like um, a drag troupe 
dance troupe that can kind of like go out there in the community, entertain, and at the same time, um, uh, educate people about HIV prevention. Um, so at that time, I decided that I want to think about like maybe if we they had the Spice Girls, maybe we, we can come up with the Rice Girls, and uh, voila, you know, they were born. Um, they were the ambassadors of HIV prevention and education, as branded, and uh, it was composed. It was really kind of like a copycat of Spice Girls, but they had very unique names like Jasmine Rice, Puff Rice. Uh, fried rice, you know, um, basmati rice, and all this stuff. And actually, they were peer leaders for the community, uh, from for our agency here. And they went out and did outreach. They went out and did presentations, demonstrations, and uh, pretty much they were the face of the organization um, in different fairs like Folsom Street Fair, Castle Street Fair, and even in uh, uh, shows or benefits, you know. So. Um, and guess what? We were able to find some f footages of uh, the Rice Girls and um, I thought they were all lost and everything but we found one online and uh, I hope that you enjoy this, you know, and uh, here they are.
20 years ago when we had the Rice Girls, you know, they all were performing, entertaining, and you know, there comes to a point in their lives where they, you know, want to pass on the baton. And um, thank God that there were, you know, for some API folks out there who saw this concept to be very advantageous to bring awareness for our cultural identity. And um, we had a program specialist here whose name is Alex. And uh, he was kind of like my right hand uh, when we did outreach, when we did events for the organization. And he conceptualized the group called the Rice Rockets. Um, basically, they're kind of like a spin-off from the Rice Girls, except this, this folks are very daring, you know, and they're bigger, actually. Times change, you know, but uh, the Rice Rockets has been going out there raising funds for different organizations. They've been going on for the past, I believe, 10 years now. They just celebrated their 10th year anniversary as Rice Rockets, and um, they've uh, been on America's Got Talent. Uh, they didn't make it, but you know, just that alone is an achievement, you know. Um, but the nice thing about this, folks, is that they are continuing, you know, uh, what is known for our community to be very creative, innovative, and at the same time, just you know, contributing to make our um, our our communities more uh, more shining and more uh, colorful. So, so here they are. I want you all to watch them and uh, I believe I'm not sure what this clip is but you know some of the rice rockets if you want to know is uh, like Estee Longa who leads the band I mean the group and also um, uh, Don Javet Je Vois Me, Chi Chicago all those things you know so they came up with some really fun names you know so so enjoy this and um, yeah here they are Rice Rockets, June 26, 2011. It gets better with time.
just a jump to the left. For people living with HIV, keep being you and ask your doctor about Victarvi. Victarvi is a complete one pill, once a day treatment used for HIV in certain adults. It's not a cure, but with one small pill, Victarvi fights HIV to help you get to and stay undetectable. That's when the amount of virus is so low, it cannot be measured by a lab test. Research shows people who take HIV treatment every day and get to and stay undetectable can no longer transmit HIV through sex. Serious side effects can occur, including kidney problems and kidney failure. Rare, life-threatening side effects include a buildup of lactic acid and liver problems. Do not take Victarvi if you take Dofetilide or Rifampin. 
Tell your doctor about all the medicines and supplements you take if you are pregnant or breastfeeding, or if you have kidney or liver problems, including hepatitis. If you have hepatitis B, do not stop taking Victarvi without talking to your doctor. Common side effects were diarrhea, nausea, and headache. If you're living with HIV, keep loving who you are and ask your doctor if Victarvi is right for you. Hi, everyone. Next on the itinerary, we invited Bay Area natives to come together in a brief discussion around their experiences. In this conversation, they touched upon solidarity, intersectionality, and addressing anti-Blackness in the API community. Yes, we need to talk about that. As well as other communities of color. Here is Jay introducing the panelists for today, as well as our wonderful moderator. The Black Lives Matter movement to me means a moment of shame and a moment of triumph. Shame because after more than two centuries of civilized existence, espousing values of liberty, freedom, and dignity in this country, this country continues to kill, I'm sorry, hunt black and brown American citizens in its own backyard. The next time we send our gazillion dollar armies and weapon systems to guard those aforementioned values, look in the mirror at your own face. BLM is also a moment of triumph because you may hang us, kill us, and put your knees on our necks, but you will never be able to erase us. One goes down and hundred will take their place. No justice, no peace. And the whole world is watching what's behind those smug, white supremacist faces. Communi communities of color and allies will show up and hunt white supremacy down, topple racial injustice, and ignite our identities in all their authentic selves in the annals of American history. We were always here, but that's just me. Time to introduce our panelists. First, I would like to introduce Monique. Monique Duchess Monroe is a black trans woman who has personal and professional experience dealing with mental health, both working in the field as a mental health counseling supervisor and over 20 years of personal mental health issues. She has a vast experience on how society can worsen a person who has a mental health condition and what coping skills can be used to rectify the situation. She is also an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, and a modern day hustler. All things glam, she is. Next, we have Pearl, Aria Bilahin, AKA Pearl Tease, is a proud black and Pine trans woman and San Francisco native. She works for mental health client rights advocacy and is one of the ladies of Asia SF. She's the host and curate co-curator of Trans Voices at Strat with the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. She's the first and only transgender woman that co-anchors the San Francisco Pride Parade on the KPIX CBS live stream. She's on this year's creative team as a writer for the Lesbian and Gay Freedom Band. Wow, the list goes on. From hosting events to winning pageants, Aria's main goal is to inspire trans youth, letting them know their lives are precious. Last but not the least, we have Keith. Keith Bell is an Afro-Samoan creative and dancer born in San Francisco and raised in Hunter's Point the intersection of being Pacific Islander, Black, and queer has always influenced his art and how he carries himself every day. He hopes that by the time the next Pride rolls around, we can have many more conversations on what API means to us Pacifica people without COVID-19. This conversation is moderated by Jared Gonzaga. Jared pronouns he, they, is a queer Filipinx whose passion is to serve queer communities of color. He currently holds a position as the HIV Prevention Coordinator at the San Francisco Community Health Center 
and I have seen his work up and close. How are you, Jerry? Oh, thank you so much for that, Anjali. Um, thank you, Jay, Anjali, and Era. Happy Pride. Hi, everyone. It's Jared, and we are so excited to share with you a brief discussion I had with our wonderful panelists. As a community, it's important to stand up for injustices and uplift Black voices to support the Black Lives Matter movement. I want to give a trigger warning that some of the topics we discuss might be intense for some. These are really hard conversations, but conversations that needed to happen nonetheless. So I really appreciate you all tuning in for this special segment. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Pearl, Keith, and Monique. Morning. So, hi everyone. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, thank you for joining us. We have Pearl, Keith, and Monique here. Um, so pretty much I just wanted to start off and say hello. How are each of you doing and how have you been doing during the COVID-19 pandemic? I've been doing pretty good. Um, still busy with work. That hasn't changed. Um, I luckily have an amazing partner and some great roommates um, in Animal Crossing. So I don't feel like I've been too far away from my friends and have been able to stay connected in one way or another. Yes, with the Animal Crossing. <laughs> and how about you, Monique? How have you been doing? I've been doing well. Um, I have been working still as well. Um, and there's a lot of activities going on at one time. So I've been remaining busy. Yes, I've seen that you and Pearl are both on tr doing Transmarch stuff as well. So thank you so much for being here. I know your schedules are so packed and um, I'm happy to have you here and have this conversation with you both. And how about you, Keith? How are you doing? Honestly, I've just been working 40 hours, going <laughs> home. Um, I've really been boring. Like the protests low-key scare me. Work scares me because these people don't wear masks. Like... It's a lot, but I'm good just working, keeping busy, trying to escape real life as best as I can. Good, good. I hear that. I hear that, especially with the mask. I've been seeing a lot of folks not wear a mask out there, and I'm like, how are y'all doing it? Y'all have an immunity vaccine that I don't know about? But it's crazy to see people still doing that out there. But I guess it's, let's go into the questions and get started with the conversation. So um, our first question, in the last month, the Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter movements have gained an increase in worldwide visibility and attention. Across the world, we have witnessed powerful protests, empowering rallies, and a movement for advocacy, education, and reform. How has this specific moment in, in our time affected you personally in your communities and in your work? Well, now I'm being asked to do more interviews and discussions like this, um, where we are talking about like anti-blackness and stuff like that. Um, I've had more more people check in with me um, that don't normally check in with me, and I just it's I just think it's very performative in their reactions with everything going on um, to face whatever guilt it is that they may be feeling. Um, and I, like, I, I really don't know how to feel about that because it doesn't necessarily feel genuine. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you for that answer. It's a very honest answer. And I think this is things that, you know, folks need to hear. And how about you, Monique? How's, um, how's everything been with you in terms of like, how has this specific moment affected you personally, your community, your friends, your circles? Um, I feel like this this time has definitely been enlightening, to say the least. Um, it's definitely been an awakening moment for a lot of relationships. My husband and I, he's he's biracial, um, and he's he's fair complected, and so seeing the dynamic of how he grew up and him understanding how much of a conflict uh, society is and how much race does play a part, it's it's interesting to see how he understands my perspective and how I grew up. Um, and then seeing relationships, um, even in work um, and within like families, just, it's just, it's extremely disheartening to see some people just, they've been racist for a long time mm -hmm. or they've been transphobic for a long time and they've just been hiding it. Yes. No more hiding, so. And then how about you, Keith? Um, for me, I feel like I've been in the same state of and 
escapism ever since COVID, but like, you know, all the protests and all like the racial hang ups and lynchings and stuff. Like it really, I feel like seeing it on social media as much as I do you know, for like a 22 year old with Twitter, like I feel like I, like every time a name pops up or something happens, I feel like I see it. Whereas my parents probably won't get the gist of it. But I feel like my, my black family, I feel like we're all just like in this weird, like, do we believe it? Or it's not saying we don't believe it, but it's just like, wow, we're in 2020 and people are still getting lynched. And then like my right. Polynesian family, like, you know, like I feel like they're showing their ass trying to be, you know, progressive or forward about it. And like they show their ass trying to talk about Black Lives Matter. And it's just a lot. It's very draining for me, I think. And I think this whole movement and everything either makes people realize like I need to get on this train or like hide and you know just shut up and yes. it's a lot it's very draining um I'm hoping for better days by the end of the year yeah definitely I mean I'm I know right now with everything happening out there it's kind of a lot of things that I've been hearing is that it's really hard to see where everything's are going and you know some days are really good days especially when we're talking about um seeking justice but yet we still have police officers like the police officers that um in Breonna Taylor's case and Elijah McCain's case they're not arrested they're not you know things are not happening there so there's definitely a lot more the work is not done and that being said with it being pride month um I think we wanted to bring the conversation around how we can have um you know the community especially the API queer community support and as we all know, June is Pride Month, and during this time, the community often comes together to celebrate our differences and our similarities. We come together to celebrate who we are, who we love, and how we love. Words that come to mind when describing the feeling this month brings us is unity or solidarity. But really, what does the word solidarity and unity mean to you specifically during this time? I think people, people need to do the work. Um, I shouldn't have to play teacher and I should, I should feel protected and not feel like I have to defend myself in every space that I take up. And um, that like me just be, me just existing is going to be a problem. That should not be a case. Um, additionally, like this is a movement. It's not a moment. Um, this isn't something that we should just let die out. Like this is something that needs to go on past June and that, um, it, 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 if it dies out, like, it's just, it's almost like Heath was saying, like, was any of this real to begin with? It, like, it, it, what, is it believable? Like, no. Nobody wants to feel like they're not part of these communities that we should feel part of. And I feel like that's something that's always happened and is only, only kind of changing now. Um, and um, yeah i would say for me solidarity um specifically for like non-black people of color and white people like you know i would say especially like the last two months i see people like this is how you donate here this is how you do this like you want to march here's a whole list for the month if you want to march and you know for me personally like i used to not, I don't want to say feel bad, but I would see like all the non-black people, white people posting all these things to help all these white people. And it was, and I was like, why am I not also reposting these things? But also it's like, even before all of this blew up, like I was, you know, for police, for against police brutality, like probably 2017, me and my friends literally got assaulted by the police because of my friend. I don't know. But, you know, like, I would feel like, you know, I feel like that's solidarity for sure, because I feel like most of those non-Black people and white people's followers, they're ignorant. Like, like this type of civil rights unjust and, like, like making their brain have to think and have opinions for themselves. And, like, these non-Black people posting all these resources, I feel like that's probably the best way to show solidarity if you're not outright paying people. Um like just this past Juneteenth, I made almost $200 just for posting like, like, hey, I'm black and it's Juneteenth, like send me money and like people actually send me money. Like that's the kind of solidarity I want because I don't care for like performative posts and this, this and that, like, cause it just doesn't really do anything for me personally, especially in such like a trying time where, you know, we need money, people don't have jobs. I'm very lucky to work. And so that's, personally what I want to see more of. 
Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And how about you, Monique? Great question. Um, solidarity for me um, and Unity right now means a little bit of what they both said. Um, it's just highlighting a lot of what is going on right now and then understanding that June, yes, it is Pride Month, but it did start not as a celebratory event. And so continuing on the fight and not just taking a break in June and then continuing on in July, it's still a fight. It's still a fight. And so just main, maintaining a solid foundation and an understanding of what we're fighting for and not wavering on it just because it's a party. Yes, yes, yes. I love that. I know. And that is something that I know folks are starting to discover more, like tapping into like, where, where did pride come from? It, you know, the protests, when we talk about Compton's, we talk about, you know, Marsha P. Johnson, we talk about Sylvia Rivera, and a lot of folks are educating themselves on, like, realizing, wow, like, me as a queer person, it really comes off of the work that Black and Brown trans women have paved the way for us to, you know, be able to have these celebrations and be proud to who we are and have this entire month. And that um, brings me to my next question. And... Um, I really want to start off with this question with um, you all kind of focusing on the, um, what intersectionality means. So um, pretty much intersectionality is acknowledgement that everyone has their own unique experiences of discrimination, oppression, and we must consider everything and anything that can marginalize people such as gender identity, race, class, sexual orientation. And I really want to take this time for each of us to look at our own intersections and how they framed how we navigate through the world. How has acknowledging your own intersections influenced your decisions, ideals, and your truths? And how has this acknowledgement manifested itself in how you perceive yourself and others, especially during this time? Well, I feel like I, being a Black, trans, Filipino woman with all of these intersections, I've always been very aware that like, I'm, I'm not just like the general white cis public. Um, and it's, it's affected everything that I do. It's, it's affected how I travel, whether it be for work or for, for vacation or just going to the grocery store. I, ha I have to know whether it's gonna be safe for me to go there to begin with, wherever that is. Um, and I don't think it um, changed anything in how I perceive myself per se. Um, but I, I will say that I have noticed as parts of my intersections have changed as far as like being a trans woman who, have, who has gotten certain surgeries like, uh, like done to my body and face and how being um, someone who may be conventionally attractive now is getting booked for things that she wasn't getting booked before. And, um, it's hurtful um, because it also makes me very aware of how the world how the world treats people like me, um, and and it, it's it's tokenism. Like I said, it's hurtful. It's dehumanizing. Um, I've said this in the the New York Times article that you mentioned earlier. Sexism is everywhere. Trans misogyny and transphobia is everywhere. Racism is everywhere. And if you have intersections like myself, you can't go anywhere without facing those things mm -hmm. from the public. Yes, yes. Does anyone want to follow up with, on that? Um, I feel like intersectionality for me, it's always been a bit strange because I um, grew up in San Francisco, Hunter's Point, grew up with my, I have two sisters who are also someone younger than me, but, you know, we were raised black, like, we ate black American food, like, we lived in, like, you know, the projects, like, they still do, <clears throat> and, you know, like, personally growing up, I never really felt anything but black until I started growing up in the churches and stuff with my mom and her people and all that, and, you know, growing up, and, you know, to this day, like, I joke about it, but, you know, I do tell, like, I, I, for both, like, when I say I'm Black, it doesn't necessarily mean, like, I'm just Black, but I do joke about it a lot, like, I always joke to people, like, I'm Black, and, like, only Black, but right. I feel like one of the reasons why I only say that is because growing up, like, with Polynesians, like, Pacific Islanders, period, like, they are so anti-Black, 
Like, when I tell you they hate my father down, like, I just had to cut off, like, the last cousins that I ever talked to because, you know, they said something about Black Lives Matter. And I was like, wait a minute, this is hella racist. <laughs> like, y'all are crazy. So I feel like for me growing up, people haven't really perceived me as anything but Black. Like, if you're a stranger to me, like, I would say 90, 90% of the time you're going to assume I'm Black which is what I'm treated as. But when it comes to the Pacific Islanders, it's always a, it's always like a interrogation or, a, or a like, are you sure? Like you're Samoan or, you know, like, you know, I don't really see it or, you know, I don't want to believe it. So for me, uh, it also, that's also probably one of the reasons why I'm like, you know, what, what, what is solidarity besides education? Not for me. Um, I feel like in terms of intersectionalities, um, it's been a it's been a great like ride, but you know also it's shunned me. It's it's definitely uh, shifted me from learning more about Polynesian culture. Like it's cool to have it, but you know like the, they're literally that anti-black to the point where I'm like, dude, I literally stopped learning the language just because I was like, it seems kind of pointless. Like you know, like this black person coming to you like Talofa doing the whole sh- shabam, and you have like these, you have like these unchecked like nasty feelings about me you know it's like you know which is why i'm just like i'm black (laughs) like so it's more of like a safety not even really a safety thing but like when i say like i'm black i'm just like you know if i had to choose because you know api can be that anti-black like i would choose because it can be that anti-black it's been pretty much my life until I, i was 16 17 so Yeah, I definitely agree with that. But on the other side of that, I've also had to fight for my blackness as well. Yeah, Uh, that too. But yeah, totally feel you on that. Sorry. No worries. Thank you both for sharing. And you, Monique. It's just interesting to hear others' perspectives um, and then to touch on the point of of intersectionality. Excuse me. (laughs) I'm sorry, I'm just listening to both points and I'm mixing everything up. But to touch on the point, I've acknowledged that my plight for change or to understand things is a lot different from other people. And then sitting back and listening, I, I, have, a, I have a feeling that you all are younger than me. Um, I'm well into my 30s. <laughs> but to listen to, um, to, listen to you all, it's, it's very interesting. It's enlightening. I grew up in Oakland um, and I grew up around Black Panthers. Um, and so my understanding of who I am as a person is completely different. Um, and then my introduction into the world is completely different, especially when it comes to acceptance. Um, I've, I've also always heard a scrutiny um, in terms of like my resting face, it's uncomfortable to look at, or my skin is extremely dark and it's compared to the ugliest things in the world. And so it's, it takes a toll and then when I hear when I hear this term, it's like, we didn't have that when I was younger. It sounds like it was, it was created so that it can include mixed races. Um, and when we do that, we take, I feel like we take a lot away from what it, what it means to be black in America. And so in, in a sense, in a, in a little, a little sense, it does sting a little bit when I hear people bring it up because in a way we're negating what the actual, the actual problem and the issue is. We're trying to get some type of acceptance by adding different races or ap- adding different things. And me growing up in the time that I grew up in, it was popular to date um, Polynesian women or uh, Filipino women. It's still a popular thing. Mm-hmm. But the reason, the reason being is because lighter means the closest thing to acceptance. And yeah. so for me, for me, it's, it's a discussion that needs to be had, but I feel like we're negating the, the actual issue. It's problematic for me to be in America, for people that look like me to be in America, but everybody else, they pass. My skin tone doesn't, unfortunately. Love that. right. I love you being very, very real with that. And I think that is, you know, definitely a big issue that, um, communities are having in terms of the conversation and like as myself being api i know that colorism is very real in the api community you know if you go down to um back to the philippines where i'm from um 
it's always like the lighter you are, the better you are. That's just how it is out there. And I, I feel like they're bringing that over here as well. And then it plays into the, just like you said, Monique, um, when it comes to dating and like people of color, especially in the in dating and everything, it just, it gets very blurred. The lines get very blurred. And that brings me to my next question. And um, as an Asian Pacific Islander, oh yeah, yeah, feel free, yeah. Just touching back on intersections and also including the intersection of like a, being like a transgender woman and everything going on with Black Lives Matter. Um, I just spoke at a Juneteenth rally and I had to talk about how sometimes my transness somehow it, like takes away from me being black. Like we could talk about Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and Breonna Taylor, but then what about Dominique Fells? What about Nina Pop? What about Tony McDade? You know, these black trans people who were killed are and Iana Dior, Iana Dior, who was beat up in front of a convenience mm -hmm. store, but we can't talk about them. Like, what about their black lives? Because they need to be, they need to matter just as much as the cis black lives that people want to pro nationally protest about. So I think internet intersectionality can, can, you know, can really bring up some issues. Mm -hmm. But yeah. To speak, to speak on your point, I've also noticed that it, it seems like the person who gets hurt the most is the prettiest or the popular. Yeah. Um, so tokenism, as you mentioned before, but it's in that instance, like, why are we feeding that? And we know that that's going to be, that's mm -hmm. going to be the result. And if we are going to feed that, feed it with people that's going to be giving a message that's going to be fruitful. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of people in leadership um, in our position, trans women of color in leadership that should not be. They're right. giving the wrong message, but, but they continuously get, um, get the bookings. They get, the, they get their faces out there. And that's their, that's their reasoning. They want to get their face out there, but for the wrong thing. For the wrong reason. So we don't have women like us that are stepping up and their voices being shared and heard throughout the world. So other people, the other kids that are coming up underneath us, they can see like, hey, I have something outside of just going from hotel to hotel, right. you know? Exactly. Love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, okay. and then, so into the next question, as an um, API person, it is safe to say that I have witnessed um, anti-Blackness that is rooted in our community. Um, I've seen it firsthand. Um, even coming in the Philippines, I've seen it here. I've seen it how there have been um, things that I've said within families that are just plain out racist and wrong. And so really what it's been found is that due to intergenerational differences, it has been especially difficult to address and hold conversations around anti-Blackness, racism, and colorism that plagues this community, as well as many other communities of color. So I wanna take this time to ask, um, ask a difficult question that some viewers at home might find uncomfortable, but I really don't give a fuck. So we need to start somewhere with this and we need to start addressing that there is anti-blackness in our communities. So with that, have you experienced racial discrimination, prejudice and or anti-blackness from other communities of color? And if so, how has that impacted your relationships with those communities or with people from those communities? I said racism is everywhere, everywhere. It's, it's in within every community. It's, you know, as well as, like I said earlier, transphobia and misogyny. And like, I've been, I've been called a nigger by other trans, by other trans women that I work with. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know a black person who has not faced discrimination from, from, from any, from everyone from any and everyone from any background. Um, yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like I could go on and on about different racist things that I've come into contact with, but I also think that continuing to feed into those conversations just brings up trauma for Black people who have had to experience those things. And it's not fair for them to have to relive these experiences over and over again. Although it is important to talk about it, but at the same time, I don't want to relive me being called a nigger every time I have one of these discussions. It's like a list, girl. You can, you can go down the list if you right. really want to, like, all day. 
because I, like to go back to the first question uh you know experiencing racism it's like you know especially in this day and age it's like how could you not be black and experience some sort of micro or macro aggression like if for me like if i'm not in an office meeting like you know it's weird shit like i work at a tech place like i go through stupid microaggressions every day like i literally had like this one white man like come and sit in front of me and just stare at me for like almost 10 minutes like after the eighth minute i literally was like hey like what's up like and he just walked away like he looked so fucking like ashamed so to go back and answer the question i guess it kind of goes back to intersectionalities too like being black and stuff like for my poly family like if i wasn't poly enough black family wasn't black enough and then like i haven't even talked about the gay thing like my like i have hella brothers and sisters and like you know if they don't if there's not one reason to you know discredit me you know we'll go back to the gay thing because like you know there's only like two out queer people in my family me and my younger 18 year old sister so um it's like, yeah, how could we not? It, I mean, it's such a shame, too. Like, it's like, where do we even go from here? Like, it's, like, not, that's, it's not even just, like the racism you face. It's also like everyone who sees the racism going on and they're, they're silent about it. Like, when I was called a nigger at work. That's it. There that's was a, exactly it. There was another girl. <laughs> that's exactly. I want to speak to your point, Aria. There was another girl up in there. There were two other girls up in there. And all of a sudden, they didn't hear it. What do you mean you didn't hear it? Were they white? No. One was a light-skinned Black girl. A very light-skinned Black girl. But she is mixed with white. She is mixed with white. But I'm going to speak to her intersections. That individual, I don't even even need to talk about. But but it's it's the complacency within the race, within the complacency is too much. It's too much. I can handle it. It makes me upset. And like, girl, you're light skin too. Wedding. <laughs> oh, God. And Go you know what? Me. It's. I think it's a lot of. It's a lot of those people who are uncomfortable. Those mm. are the people that I like to talk yeah. to because if you're uncomfortable, that means that you're not doing nothing to change it mm-hmm. until it affects you. And mm-hmm. so, if you're waiting on the wayside, then you just might as well sit there in the boat and let the Titanic just sink. Cause you're not helping at all, and if you're, you gotta affect. You have to be change if you want change. And so it's too many people picking up phones and recording what's happening instead of too many instead of people actually acting. Mm-hmm. And this happened 500 years ago. There was too many slaves and not enough owners, but somehow slavery went on forever and ever. It was too many people complaining, but not enough people acting. Uh-huh. So yes, to answer your question, yes, I'm as a dark skinned person. Take out my gender. And how I, I how I identify this is America. Yes, I have faced um, discrimination in every every definition of it. So, with that being said, we know it happens. Mm-hmm. We continue to have discussions about it, mm-hmm. but what are we doing to change it? Yes, yes, and that's that's exactly what I wanted to do with this. Is you know let folks at home and that question be in their minds, Monique. What are you doing to change? What are you doing to address it? What are you doing to not stay on the sidelines and watch it happen, but actually being part of it, you know? Being part and making the change happen. How are you using your platform, your privilege, your power to support and uplift the black community across this nation and across the world? Because it's happening everywhere. And I think right now we're seeing that um, with the protests that are not just happening here in this nation, but happening worldwide, that it happens everywhere. so, I mean, thank you so much for all of you sharing those, you know, your answers with those questions. And I know um, there's definitely a need for more conversation to happen. You know, more folks need to be addressed. There needs, people need to be held accountable. And people really just need to check themselves and who they are and how they go about the world. So with that, really, I want to close this off by giving each of you an opportunity to share an important message that you feel um, folks at home should hear. And... So what would you like to say and what would you like to say to um, someone out there, the younger Aria or younger Keith, the younger Monique, you know, someone who's watching this and looking at themselves or wants, needs to hear something important, um, what would you say to them? I would tell them, don't sit here and buy what they tell you is beautiful. You need to find out what's beautiful in you and you need to, don't let that go. Embrace yourself because no one is going to be, no one is going to be kind to you if you 
you you have to find you have to find a way to love and be kind to yourself because there's going to be so many reasons that people tell you not to and um it's 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 a struggle it's not easy but it is so worth it it is so worth it um <clears throat> i recently i recently listened to the voiceover of the documentary um that I'm doing for the Trans March. And for the first time in my life, I said, oh my God, I, I actually don't hate my voice. And it's like, I've always had issues with my voice. And it almost made me cry because like it made, it made me realize you really need to learn how to love your voice. Because people, sure, people are gonna sit here and talk about it, but th does that mean you have to agree with them and hate yourself with them? No, don't do that. Don't do that. Find a way to love every bit of yourself because you're worth it. That's what I would tell them. <laughs> Thank you. I wish I would have told the younger me, I think I was like 19, 20. Um, so I would say that pride after me and my friends got assaulted, like my friends were thrown into like the fucking the glass bus stop by Mission and Dolores where the high school is, right where the train and the crosswalk walk are. Like like we got thrown into the floor, the glass. And like honestly, I wish like, you know, the day after, literally the day after, like, you know, we shut down Mission Street and and like, you know, we sat outside their um, police station and, you know, we caused a lot of noise for like a group of like kids who just got beat up by the police. But I wish it wouldn't have taken something happening to me to have that fire under my ass only because it's like, I mean, I know about police brutality, all this shit, like, you know, you get so desensitized to it and then it happens to you. And I wish I would have kept that fire going. I feel like since I've gotten older and I'm trying to like become more independent and like get my own apartment and stuff, like it's hard doing it all by yourself. But then like you have these two pens, you have like literally like this like silent lung killer and you have like racism that like we have to go out and trek every day. Like I wish I would have took the strength that I had from when I was 19 and 20 to still be a leader like you know i'm glad all the non-black people of color and white people are posting how to help and do this and i feel like i've fallen off from that simply because life is already kicking my ass i just wish i had the strength that and resilience that i did back then i'm not saying i still can't go out there and protest but you know for me mentally i feel like it's more been a mental thing for me since the beginning of everything covid and all the um, injustices. Thank you. And Monique? Um, thank you. Um, I would like to say to the viewers that um, this is history repeating itself. And those that don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. And if you don't have children now, then think about the children that you will have and the grandkids, the grandkids. Hopefully you're here to enjoy them, but make sure that you're willing to do what's hard now to enjoy what's beautiful later. Um, what I would say to my younger self, I would definitely say that baby girl, you got it. Keep on trucking. They are mad. And if they're mad, that means you're doing something right. And to all of the babies out there, if they're mad, continue making them mad. And if they want to be famous, turn that phone on and make them famous. Don't get mad with them. Uh, I do want to ask something. In the age of technology, ignorance is a choice. So go out there and do your own research. Seriously. A absolutely. Ignorance is a choice. Yeah. And ignorance is only blissful until people like me make you famous. Right. And I'm going to make you famous. And then that's all you got. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than a pretty face. Trust yeah. me. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for your time. I appreciate you doing this and having this um, conversation with me. It's, I know it was brief and I know there's a lot more conversation that needs to happen, but I really want to thank you for doing this and really just having something like this for the community to really hear and listen into and hopefully they hear the message that you're all bringing to them.
do educate yourselves, do the work. Okay. Change needs to happen. Pay us. Yes. Thank you all so much. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you, Jared, Monique, Pearl, and Keith for this discussion. We absolutely need to talk about what we can do in the API community to fight anti-Blackness and to stand with every Black life, every Black trans queer life out there. It is our responsibility. We cannot look away people in communities of color, people in marginalized communities cannot look away to the Black movement, to the needs of eradicating the atrocities and the racism that's being meted out to our Black brothers, sisters, and everyone in between. So thank you for that discussion again. Now, we are ready to present to you all the talented performers who crafted up some beautiful videos for you all to enjoy. I'm going to pass the mic back to Era. All right, thank you, Anjali. And again, thank you to the panelists for the important conversation. Remember, Black Trans Lives Matter. And remember, the first brick that was thrown for our freedom was from a Black trans woman. Get that in your head. <sighs> okay. Who's excited to see some more spectacular performances? I can't hear you from Twin Peaks. Hello? Hello? All right. For our first performer on the digital stage, we have a funky dance team rep in Oakland, Bay Area. The Groove Against Machine, established in 2007, is a competition level hip hop group composed of talent dancers from the Bay Area and beyond. You think I can apply to them? Like, I, I can dance. Send me a message or I'll send you a message. All right. Groove Generations is an all ladies dance company representing fierce and talented female dancers ready to entertain every time. Squirrel Friends, as defined in the Urban Dictionary, is a good female friend, a tight girl buddy. Just like me and Mimi. Hey, hey, Mimi. You are not BFFs, but you are close enough to share the casual crap of daily life. Talking about crap on daily life. Oof. We all represent in the Groove Studios in Oakland, California. <laughs> Can you get it up? Come here, rude boy, boy, is your big enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Want a song about it? Like to hear it? Here it go. Free your mind. generation experience.
All right, isn't that amazing? They perform so good. I wanna be part of that crew right now. All right, next up, we have a pretty new group of drag ladies representing Asian and Pacific Islanders. Ooh, ooh, baby, I. The House of Sierra, which started out as a group of friends playing around with tattered wigs, just like what I'm wearing right now, and broken heels, which is mostly all in my heels, evolve into a bond of sisterhood and support each other in their love for the drag arts. These girls not only hail from SF Bay, but also in LA and NYC. Please give it up for the House of Sierra. <laughs> Loving when I'm flexing up in my car Door swing open for my passenger Look up in the mirror, fix my mascara People wanna know who the hell is her Drop top riding in my coupe de ville I stay mobbing in my hoop to steal Rattling the trunk when I play the traps Word to the left, yelling holla back Take it from here. Late to the party, but I'm always on time. Yeah, I'm misunderstood, but I'm always on your mind. Yeah, who cares if we turn up every night? The top down when we pull up at the light. I don't listen to what nobody says. So loud I can't hear nobody say nothing. I wish you would say something about me and my girls. Yeah, something. Ain't no problems here. See, I'm just trying to. Be a good time Shake. 
Make that money on a dime Don't be a sugar daddy She can work it just fine Up on the table She'll be dancing yeah. all night you enjoyed a performance today as it would have marked the 50th anniversary of Pride celebration in San Francisco. But during these crazy times, our generation has been faced with an ongoing crisis of COVID-19, racism, and police brutality. As we take the time safely tucked away in our homes to reflect on Pride and what it means for the LGBTQ community, and us personally, we need to take notice of the countless Black trans lives lost that go unheard, unreported, and underrepresented. The Black Lives Matter movement that we see today is finally shaking society at its core, and we're finally waking up. But somehow we're still sleeping on our Black trans sisters, brothers, and those in between. Do not forget that the lives of the Black trans community were at the forefront of the fight for our rights to exist today. As our protests continue for the Black Lives Matter, don't just live in the moment, but continue to live for the movement. I urge you to not let the countless lives lost and those powerful voices get lost in the wind because we're all in this fight together. So do what you can, either protesting safely on the streets, donating to causes, or educating not just those around you, but continue to educate yourself. So today I wish you a happy Pride and remember that we depend on you to ensure that all Black Lives Matter. So stay safe, stay healthy, and stand up. Time to step up, prep up. Step up. Prep up. To help keep you free from the risk of HIV. From the makers of Truvada, there's another prep option. Discovi for Prep, a once daily prescription medicine that helps lower the chances of getting HIV through sex. It's not for everyone. Discovi for Prep has not been studied in people assigned female at birth. Talk to your doctor to find out if it's right for you. Step up for health and body. Prep up for your one and only love, or many loves. For kings, this queen, and you royals in between. For my now. Our now. And my future. Our future. Step up, prep up. Discovy is another way to prep. Discovy does not prevent other sexually transmitted infections, so it's important to use safer sex practices and get tested regularly. You must be HIV negative to take Discovy for prep, so you need to get tested for HIV immediately before and at least every three months while taking it. If you think you were exposed to HIV or have flu-like symptoms, tell your doctor right away. They may check to confirm you are still HIV negative. Serious side effects can occur, including kidney problems and kidney failure. Rare life-threatening side effects include a buildup of lactic acid and liver problems. The most common side effect was diarrhea. Tell your doctor about all the medicines and supplements you take, or if you have kidney or liver problems, including hepatitis. If you have hepatitis B, do not stop taking Discovy without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about your risk of HIV. And have Discovy for PrEP. 
is right for you. Words are loud, but actions are louder. Step up. Prep up. With Discovi for prep. Get help paying for Discovi for prep. Learn more at stepupprepup.com. Wow. The last performance group looked like they had a lot of fun recording that. I hope you're also all having a lot of fun so far. Let us know in the chat. Next up, we have another dance team representing the Bay Area. Syndicate is a noun and the dictionary defines it as a group of individuals or organizations combined to propose, promote some common interest. Syndicate represents unity, passion, and hard work. With members from all over the Bay Area, Syndicate truly embodies what it means to come together as a family to pursue our common interest, dance. Through this common interest, Syndicate hopes to be an inspiration for people everywhere to band together and work hard to reach the heights they ultimately wish to achieve. Give it up for Syndicate. Huh? Welcome to the party. Back. We never lack, lack with that strap. I'ma drive through, but if we back, back, it's gonna clap, clap, and that's that. I never tap, tap if I don't like a hoe. You act, act like you like a though. Never backtrack if I ain't fucking with you. Can't sit with us, but you might go. All my pretty bitches, house of diddy bitches, got a milli bitches on go. Oh, silly bitches, I'm Achilles, bitches, yo pop. Who the fuck wants smoke? Keep, keep it real, you really mad, cause your baby dad used to like me though. I, I ain't fuck him, cause I ain't want him. Told him take a hike like a hiker though. Fendi moon boots, size six, got me walking around like I'm Michael though. Paint my hair, cause I'm Tyson, Jordan, Angelo. Baby, welcome to the party. Colorful weave and your makeup is beating. That's how you act just like a Barbie. Baby, welcome to the party. Mm. He want to party with Barbie. This bitch, I'm a duck. Give me lit. Gun on my head. One in the head. Set in the clip. Baby. Baby, baby, baby. baby, don't trip. Just lower your tone. Cause you can get hit. Baby, welcome to the party. Huh? Welcome to the party. Your dinero. So if you're riding, riding too, by your side, I always gonna go. You, you know I fucks with ya, with ya, with ya. Ooh, I fucks with ya. With you, with you. He said he loves me 'cause I'm loyal, loyal. But not about me 'cause I'm loyal, loyal. He fucking with me 'cause I'm loyal. to turn down cause you ain't doing enough I count up all these hundreds while I'm doing too much bitch bitch pipe down you ain't doing enough she like cash bitch, bitch you doing too much what? I'm like shut up ho ho oh, you ain't doing enough that's right oh you fucking mad Hi. that's too fucking bad Hi. since you fucking ass <laughs> I like doing too much
I had them haters asking how you up in that road And how them umbrellas coming out of that door How the front doors open up like the back doors I be like, you ain't rich enough You ain't got my bitch in the Lamborghini bikini on the beach sitting up Now you bitching up, now you bitch with us She said that champagne nasty, spit it up Tori took one line of it, a hot song Now the chicks won't taste, I am not gone But it's been five times you ain't catch on Baby on the next song I can't let you go without me from those dance teams. Who is ready for our first music artist performance of the night? Yeah? <laughs> at the age of four, Maddie B started singing in front of family and friends at social events. She was in love with the idea of becoming the best singer. Maddie has had the honor and privilege to sing the national anthem at the NBA Golden State Warriors game and at the MLB Oakland A's Filipino Heritage Night. She is no stranger to the stage. Let's give it up for the singing sensation, Maddie B. Woohoo! <laughs> I'll sing it one last time for you. And we really have to go I know we'll make it anywhere Away from here I 
we only stand by and hope for the best or wait for others to act, change will never happen. We all need to work together to eliminate racism. It might be scary to take that first step, but just know you are never alone. There are so many resources and people who can get you started and be there for you. Like Barack Obama said, we are the change we seek. Love you guys. Stay safe. All right, awesome performance. So now let's move on to our next entertainer. I'm so proud of her. She is my Gappa. I did make her Gappa grand grand oh, granddaughter, I think. Oh my God, I'm so old. I can't remember anything anymore. Shit. All right. She is sweet, dark, and guaranteed to keep you up all night, just like when I'm drinking coffee on double shifts at work. <laughs> Mocha Fapolate is the mother of the house of dolls, here to spread her blend of horror, facts, and filth wherever she goes. Definitely the filth. Yeah, I know you, bitch. We hang out. As the reigning Miss Gappa, she hopes to help lead the community towards sex positivity, self-love, and self-expression. I'm very glad to introduce our next entertainer, the reigning Miss Gappa once again, Miss Mocha Fapolate. <laughs> With my thoughts in a bottle Every time I take a sip I'm reminded of you Like how you been Wait a minute, what am I doing? It feels different When you're not around Never thought that this would be us I feel a way I feel a way Baby I was fighting but you
could promise to be with the weight Hoping that you think about us sometimes I'm still leaning on the lonely Another broken heart, another day When I fall in love, I guess I'm always gonna stay Living like a ghost, I'm haunted all songs for you, baby. gonna go crazy no. all right another pride and joy of mine is gaba miss shuma is a second generation taiwanese hong Kongese american drag queen originally born and raised in the bay area she now lives in la well she kind of still lives here because i always see her here in the bay before the lockdown anyway so she now lives in LA where you can catch her hosting and performing at Game Boy. Oh my God, the Filipino acting just came out there. Game Boy in West Hollywood. Oh, I wanna go there one day. 
and she also co-produces LA's first monthly API drag show called Send Nudes. No, literally send me nudes later. She also represents Prison Foundation as Miss Gappa 2018. She hopes to use drag as a way to build community among queer APIs and explore the issues that are prevalent within our community. Once again, my other pride and joy, I'd like to introduce to you our next performer, Miss Schumann. <laughs> Let's get down to business to step on the sea. Did they send me clowns when I asked for queens? You're the saddest bunch I ever met, but you can bet before we're through. Anyhow, make a queen out of you. First you glue your eyebrows, or do not, first fine. Then you paint your mug, then your eyes you line. Not like that, you crusty, crunchy fool. You look like a garbage chute. Somehow I'll make a queen out of you. Never gonna learn how to paint my face What is this about some padding? Girl, was I a fool for thinking this was quick? Now for my looks, is it leather or lace? Oh my god, my tuck is sagging Time for the show, let's go, you better tip Be a queen we Must be fierce as a pop star diva Be a queen With a laugh straight from a cartoon Be a queen With all this makeup we will discover how we use drag to celebrate our truth. Time is racing towards us till the show begins. Lip sync for your life and the crown you'll win. But you're stumbling in those stiletto heels. Sashay your way, go home, you're through. How could I make a queen out of you? Be a queen. We must be fierce as a pop star diva. Be a queen. With the laugh straight from a cartoon. Be a queen. <laughs> With all this makeup, we will discover how we use drag to celebrate. Our truth Be a queen Fierce as a pop star diva Be a queen With the laugh straight from a cartoon Be a queen With all this makeup we will discover How we use drag to celebrate Our truth Thank you so much for tuning into my performance today. Happy Pride and in the spirit of Pride, I think it's important that we remember that Pride in itself is a rebellion, it is resistance, and we carry that spirit through us as we are supporting the Black Lives Matter movement right now. It's important for us also to support the lives of Black trans folks who are facing systematic oppression and are systemically at higher rates of violence than any other population here in America. So it's important that we continue to get the spirit of pride and continue the spirit of resistance by supporting this movement. 
keep your foot on the gas and don't forget to rest. Uh, rest is an important ingredient and there is no revolution without rest and rest is radical in the face of capitalism. So please make sure that you are taking care of yourself so that we can keep our foot on the gas and continue this revolution. Make sure you're still donating to organizations, donate to black trans organizations, um, donate to other organizations fighting for justice, making sure that you are not only putting your money where your mouth is, but also making sure that your actions match that as well. So get involved in your city council meetings, your uh, police commission meetings, get involved in signing multiple petitions a day, reaching out and calling your governors and elected officials with unique and organic messages, not just the template. It's important that we all continue this work because we are not free until all of us are free. With that, happy pride. Thank you so much again for tuning in and I'll catch you later. Thank you for a beautiful performance from two Miss Gappa queens. Speaking of queens, next we have Parivar Bay Area. Anjali, who is the president and co-founder of Parivar Bay Area. What is Parivar Bay Area? Parivar is you. Parivar is me. Parivar is all of us. Parivar means family in Hindi. It is about coming together and providing and giving platform and voice to those that are almost always left behind. The transgender non-conforming intersex South Asian lives in this world, in this country, in this San Francisco Bay Area. Parivar was a vision that wanted to do exactly that. And Proud to say that along with Sanjeev and Anand, I have been able to bring Parivar to a place where we are able to support and grow our family, our Parivar together. We are unapologetic in going beyond cisness and reclaiming those spaces that are not just in the LGBT community, but also in the intersectionality of South Asian community and lives to be able to uplift and showcase what it means to be trans, what it means to be queer, while still also being a South Asian. So it is ensuring two particular things, that the South Asian diaspora is beyond folks from just the parts of India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, because South Asians are everywhere in this world. And two is to uplift the trans, gender non-conforming intersex voices that are so important and so fragile in our South Asian communities. Parivar is fiscally sponsored by the LGBT Asylum Project and we are very grateful for their support and has been leading the COVID coalition for the San Francisco Bay Area in supporting our LGBTQ communities across intersectionalities with financial and gender relief support. Check out Parivar on Facebook, Instagram, Parivar Bay Area, and also our website, parivarbayarea.org. Perfect. And for me, Parivar means community. Parivar means mirroring of strengths and virtues of identity. Parivar means even if you're running away from your motherland where you were born, even if you seek refuge in this country, come in, be unapologetic, whoever you are whatever gender expression you might be. Parivar opens its arms and says, you're welcome. And by looking at each other and looking at each other's strengths, like Anjali so proudly leads us, we can stand proud in this country and we can stand proud wherever we are because we are part of Parivar. You are family. And speaking of Parivar, it's time now to introduce our next artist from Parivar Bay Area. Kamini Sutra, a South Asian, Telugu, genderqueer, bearded drag artist from Washington, D.C., transcends Western drag expectations by their performance repertoire and their aesthetic senses. Kamini is now bringing the funny and comic part of two ladies from Big Bash Show who got into fight for dustbin. <laughs> LOL. Hashtag Telugu. Give it up. For Parivar. Oh, my on my head. Well, tough to teeth today. I plan to wear them on my eyes. Deal with it.
the rich have arrived. Hello, hello everyone. Hello, hello, hello to you, to you, to you, to you. Mira tu obraga de creo. Please sit down. Or you can just laugh because my entrance is very humorous. The shiny sitting right there. You shiny. Nice. Dr. Lohia ke spaase karaya. Me too. Same pinch. <laughs> nice bota. Mm, nice filler. Call me. Call me after. You. Yeah, don't laugh too much. Your jaw will come. Drop down. <laughs> you are nice. Nice. Not very nice. You must leave. And you. Stay. Because Billy's here. Stay. You know what every comedian keeps talking about? That why did the chicken cross the road? Well, I will tell you why did all the chicken cross the roads. I'll tell you, so that it could be on my Caesar salad, on my plate, in my home. Coco, my Caesar salad le karao. Yes, offense so to all the people. संपूर्ण लॉकडाउन होने जा रहा कभी खुशी कभी गम न जुदा होंगे हम कभी खुशी कभी गम You interested in a BJ? Horny you? Are you a top? Are you a top? Ye ye jagah hai ye sawal puchne ka? Nahi nahi, aap bataiye. Ye jagah hai kya ye sawal puchne ka? Aap bataiye. Suniye, don't act smart with me. This is a different. I've come for my sister-in-law's function. Is this the question that you should be asking? Pooja, what is this behavior? I'm sorry, I kicked it by mistake. You can't kick it by mistake. Then pick it up if it bothers you. No, it you. is. You will pick it up. You don't tell me what to do. I can tell you what you to do. do. No, no, tell me what to do. You do not tell me what to do. You do not tell me what to do. Or what? Are you going to hit me? Do you want it? I don't want it. Because you're asking for it. You're dying for it. Get off my back. Got it? I want it. I got it. Yeah, I want it. Do you want it? I, I see it. Because you're asking it. for it. I like it. You're dying for it. I want it. Get off my back. I got it. Yeah. Got it? I got it. Yeah. Pooja, calm down. Oh. Calm down. Vida, Vida. Pooja, calm down. Pooja, what is wrong with you? Ye shokhi, ye adai, ye baank ban. Inki qeemat, hala dunya tay kar sakti hai kya? What is this behavior? I'm sorry, I kicked it by mistake. You can't kick it by mistake. Then pick it up if it bothers you. No, you pick it up. You can't tell me what to do. I can tell you what to do. You can't tell me what to do. Just spin. You can't tell me what to do. Or what? my back got it she's just a girl and she's on fire hotter than a fantasy lonely like a highway she's living in a world and it's on fire feel like it's
catastrophe But she knows she can fly away Oh, she got both feet on the ground And she's kicked by mistake You can't kick it by mistake She's just a girl and kicked it by mistake You can't kick it by mistake She's just a girl and she kicked it by mistake You can't kick it by mistake Oh, she got both feet on the ground And she's burning it down Oh, she got her head in the clouds And she's not backing down This girl is on fire Wasn't that the performance? Kamini Sutra does not do anything less than that. And I can speak about that from my heart and seeing it up close about their journey of crusading and trailblazing back, back home in India or here. Their work is exemplary. So thank you, Kamini Sutra. And this is a fine example of why we exist as a Parivar. It is about creating that platform for those voices that are often relegated to being just performers, just those that can provide some entertainment. We are much more beyond that. We are leaders. We are South Asian, queer, trans, gender non-conforming, intersex leaders. And Parivar is so grateful for every other organization that has inspired us to come this far. And our next performer as well is a great inspiration for us, for me as a community leader. Parivar is also supporting two support groups at the San Francisco AIDS Foundation, Guftagu and Rubru, which happen a few times every month, supporting and creating space for a community conversation, for a casual hangout. So we can talk about things, that are very uncomfortable to be spoken about, the anti-blackness, which I'm still learning and I'm still doing, trying to do my part to better serve my black brothers and sisters, especially in the trans community, to talk about sex, to talk about mental health. These are very important topics. And again, we come together as a community and support each other. And I couldn't tell, say any less about Pearl Tees, who heads the House of Teas, has founded the House of Teas, and they are our next performers. House of Teas was founded by Pearl Teas in 2017 with hopes of forming connections with the chosen family. Again, family is so important. A family that shares a passion for performing arts. Coming from a background that has been uplifted by their community, this sisterhood at the House of Teas between creative individuals not only thrive in entertainment, but also take pride in showing up, advocating, fundraising, and being involved within and for their communities. Their performance video features, Pearl Teas, Amora Teas, Aria Teas, Ari Bella and Juanina Million. Please give it up for the House of Teas.
Community Health Center for having the House of Teas. We appreciate you having us. It means so much to us and we love what you guys are doing. You guys continue keeping an eye out for what the San Francisco Community Health Center is doing for you and for us. We love you guys. Happy Pride. Happy, Happy Pride. 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 Our last performance for the night is a music artist by the name Joey Diamond. Chances are you may have heard of Joey Diamond. And if you haven't, you surely will in the near future. Joey Diamond is a YouTube hit sensation with 40, 42 million views. Joey Diamond is a hit YouTube sensation with 42 million views and 220,000 subscribers. Joey's popularity and celebrity began to swell, earning him spots on Sean Kingston World Tour the Melbourne Takeover Tour 2011, and other opportunities to perform around the world. 
Joey's global appeal has garnered him loyal fans from around the world to include the United Kingdom, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada, Germany, Italy, Philippines, South America, and every corner of the globe where you will find a computer screen. Joey also performed on this very stage last year. Let's give a warm welcome back to Joey Diamond, who will be performing his original song, Philosophies. A round of applause for Joey. It's raining, I'm frustrated, impatient, why can't you get with it, admit it, we're different, I told you, you got something I can't understand, don't understand, It's time to hit reset on what we know about HIV. HIV and AIDS are not the same thing. There is no cure for HIV, but you can live a healthy life. Treatment helps make it possible. Who should get tested for HIV? Everyone. There are now more ways than ever to protect yourself, protect the people you care about, and help prevent the spread of HIV. Testing, prevention, and treatment add up to stopping the virus. Talk to a healthcare provider and get reset at helpstopthevirus.com. Watch the videos, share the information. It's HIV education for everyone because there's something everyone can do.
can't believe we are almost done with the show. Let's give a shout out to our community partners for this event. I have to say the Bay Area is so lucky to have so many different API organizations. We are proud of collaborating with them and appreciate their support for today's live stream. Also, a very big shout out to Gilead for sponsoring this event. Remember, everyone should be on prep. Our community partners this year include Asian Health Services, APINC, APIQC, The Connection, Game Boy SF, GAPA Org, Prism Foundation, Parivar Bay Area, Project Ohana in the Bay, Rice Rockets, Alliance Health Project UCSF, and Utopia. Here are words from some of our community partners. Aria's like, okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Hello, uh, hello, hello. Uh, we want to do a big shout out. This is uh, UCSF Alliance Health Project. Many people just call us AHP. We want to do a big shout out to San Francisco Community Health Center. Congratulate you on your 20th anniversary with the API stage with pride. This is absolutely wonderful. We also want to let people know about our reopening of our uh, HIV, SCD, and HCV testing services in July. But we're aiming for July 7th. So please look us up at alliancehealthproject.ucsf.edu and make an appointment. We'll be happy to see you again. So one, two, three guys, let's get together and wish them together, wish them a happy pride. One, two, three. Happy, Happy Pride, 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 San Francisco Community, Health, Community Health, 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 Health Center. Center. Hi everyone, we are a Pink, a Bay Area grassroots organization of trans and queer Asian and Pacific Islander folks. Uh, my name is Sammy and I use they them. I'm Jasmine, I use she her. And I'm Yuan, I use they them. And we're so grateful to be joining the API Pavilion at Pride this year. And first off, we just want to affirm that Black lives matter, Black trans lives matter, and Black folks at the intersection of so many different identities um, matter in all their ways, just as Black power and Black resistance matters. That has been a commitment of our organization and will continue to be forever. Uh, this month, we have been working to uplift the demands of Black folks from around the country and to move resources to support Black lives. So, if you want to join us, we're raising $10,000 for Black-led organizations in the Bay and across the nation, and we would love your support in getting there. Yeah, we're also working hard this summer to do some work with our Dragon Fruit Network, creating some mutual aid to connect people to resources, and also practicing asking for help with some workshops. If you're interested, let us know. Thanks, Jazz. Um, also, as many of you know, we've been working for the past year and a half on the first ever needs assessment of trans uh, API people living in the Bay Area. Um, even in queer and trans API communities, the needs and experiences of our trans community members can be overlooked or invisibilized. So we hope that this project will be a chance to uplift that and really affirm that our communities here exist and that we matter. Um, and we also just want to end with gratitude for the Movement for Black Lives, organizers who are leading this work to transform our world, transform our systems, our schools, and our neighborhoods every single day, and reaffirm our commitment to sharing resources with this movement and making sure resources are abundant, to educating ourselves and our community members, and in moving in deep solidarity in the best ways that we can. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Hello and happy Pride to all you viewers out there. This is Estee Longa representing the Rice Rockettes. As May is a month for Asian and Pacific Islander heritage and June is a month for Pride, both also represent opportunities to recognize that our struggles and liberation are inextricably connected. As one of the first Asian and Pacific Islander drag troops, we started through community with the recognition that not all spaces are created equitably. Currently, we host one of the few events that cater to the API community in a Bay Area where almost 30% of our population identifies as API. 
It is with this understanding and context that we stand in solidarity with events like the Asian and Pacific Islander Pride Pavilion and Stage. Our hearts are breaking over the senseless and tragic event that led to the death of most recently George Floyd, as well as the countless others who have shared the same fate. We continue to condemn the cycle of violence by the police and other law enforcement agencies against our black and brown brothers and sisters. Not only do black lives matter, they are essential. They are beautiful. They are necessary. There are many great black queens who have inspired us, led us, and supported us. The drag culture that we participate in is not only made great by the contributions of black people, but it would be nothing without it. To the black community, we see you and stand with you. We stand as comrades with the understanding that our mutual liberation depends on dismantling white supremacy and anti-blackness. We hope that others will come to understand this as we do. To all of you out there, stay safe, stay strong, and stay vigilant. Be the best queer LGBTQIA plus person you can be. We hope to see you all again soon. My name is Michael, and I use he him pronouns, and I am the chair of GAPA. Hi, this is Tony, vice chair of GAPA. Hi, this is Marcus, he him his. I'm the secretary of GAPA. I'm Danny Chung. I proudly serve on the board for GAPA Org. This is Roland Mendoza, he him pronouns, and your current GAPA social chair. John Wynn, legal counsel. Hi, I'm Oliver Cacanata. And I'm Danny Wan. And we met through Gappa Men's Chorus. Yeah, nothing like romance through songs. Uh, I'm also currently the treasurer for Gappa. And I'm the membership chair. As I look back at the API Pride Pavilion stage, um, I'm so grateful to have been able to host and perform at the stage uh, in 2017 as Juicy Lou. Um, it was it was an amazing experience and I, I'll never forget it. My favorite memory from the API Pavilion was one year when we uh, took the gap of sign we had in the Walgreens window and literally carried it from the street through the crowd, directing people to the pavilion. They were asking us what it was, what it was. Thank you for the past 20 years of giving a nice space to the QT API community to be seen, heard, and celebrated. May there be many, many 20 years more to go. Happy 20th anniversary. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary, API Pavilion. Happy anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary, API Pride Pavilion. Happy 20th anniversary, API Pavilion. Happy 20th anniversary, API Pride Pavilion. You're an amazing space and I am so grateful for you. Step up, prep up. Step up, prep up. To help keep you free from the risk of HIV. From the makers of Truvada, there's another prep option. Discovi for Prep, a once daily prescription medicine that helps lower the chances of getting HIV through sex. It's not for everyone. Discovi for Prep has not been studied in people assigned female at birth. Talk to your doctor to find out if it's right for you. Step up for health and body. Prep up for your one and only love, or many loves. For kings, this queen, and you royals in between. For my now. Our now. And my future. Our future. Step up, prep up. Discovi is another way to prep. Discovi does not prevent other sexually transmitted infections, so it's important to use safer sex practices and get tested regularly. You must be HIV negative to take Discovi for prep, so you need to get tested for HIV immediately before and at least every three months while taking it. If you think you were exposed to HIV or have flu-like symptoms, tell your doctor right away. They may check to confirm you are still HIV negative. Serious side effects can occur, including kidney problems and kidney failure. 
Rare life threatening side effects include a buildup of lactic acid and liver problems. The most common side effect was diarrhea. Tell your doctor about all the medicines and supplements you take, or if you have kidney or liver problems, including hepatitis. If you have hepatitis B, do not stop taking Discovy without talking to your doctor. Ask your doctor about your risk of HIV, and have Discovy for prep. Is right for you. Words are loud, but actions are louder. Step up. Prep up. With Discovy for prep. Get help paying for Discovy for prep. Learn more at stepupprepup.com. So, oh my God, Anjali, where did she go? Looks like we are nearing the end of this live stream and I have lost my co-presenter. Oh, hello. Welcome to the show. Hello. Welcome back. Mm. It looks like we are nearing the end of the live stream. Except you're streaming in, honey. You're just streaming in the whole Emerald Mansion right here. I am. How can we forget? It is the 20th anniversary of the API Pavilion at San Francisco Pride. And we have... Woo! 20th anniversary of API Pavilion. Zara, zara, mehkita hai. I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty for a lot of pride action. I don't want to go, Anjali. What do I do? Well, what we can do is we can build community. We can come together as mm. the API community that exists and powerfully mm. moves forward. Mm. And how do we do that, Anjali? How do we build community? By following social distancing, but not social isolation. Yes. By staying alive, by surviving, by thriving, by enjoying our full authentic selves. By checking up on each other, by making that phone call, by sending that text message, we can continue to be the powerful LGBTQ API community. We can exist because we are the community that is going to prevail and thrive after all of this is over. And we can thank you enough for tuning in tonight. That's right. And over to you. This is Jay and Anjali That's signing nice. out. Let's do it again. This is Jay and Anjali. Passing the mic off to Era. To Era. Oh, wow. It's been three hours now. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, I'm so tired. Anyway, yes, this is Era. Thank you so much for tuning in to our virtual API Pride Pavilion and stage. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please stay safe. And from a nurse, please wash your hands. Wear your mask when you're going out and stay the fuck home if you're not doing anything important outside, okay? I don't want to take care of you in the hospital. And to close out the event, please enjoy Chico Cheese music. It's amazing. Stay put. Happy Pride, everyone! <laughs> I miss you all virtual hugs. <laughs> oh, the background. <laughs> Hey, what's up again? My name is Chico Chi. Thanks for tuning in on the API Pride Pavilion stage. Thanks for having me.
not forget Fantasy land, this I never said Fluid from the pack and you chase it in You lead from the back as you chase on my tracks And this wine on my shirt I smile through the dirt Is it okay to hurt? Cause I'm stuck in this place All you can eat is but all you can take I fell for the taste, yeah I fell for the taste The loop was not swimming in Excuse me, try and throw me out again I'm so down to me back again I just spit it in your mouth again
you want to do now? Me all a walk like a champion, walk like a champion. That piece of money can tell me where you get it from. Up on your entrance, pump up, pump up, pump. Can't let me in me a bit where you a wait on. Walk like a champion, walk like a champion. That piece of money can tell me where you get it from. Up on your entrance. Yeah, I'm coming through, ayy. The 
guess I bought us a day, hanging on the low, huh? I don't give a fuck, hey, dude. When I come through, bust down brand new. La forma que me muevo, no la forma que te mueves. Yo tengo el destino y el ritmo que tú quieres. I've been high since when Nintendo 6 4. Gotta get it how I live it, more for time, full force. I get it, I get it, you want me all in my feelings. I'm busting moves while they chillin'. I don't tip hoes, I'm the villain, uh. Yo soy mexicano donde hacen la tequila. Why you motherfuckers always worry with my tequila? Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control. Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control. Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control. Yo, yo, yo quemo caliente como ya salió el sol. Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control Yo quemo caliente como ya salió el sol Ustedes saben quién yo soy, yo no necesito una introducción Reconocen mi voz al momento de escuchar la canción Me miran en YouTube, también me miran en televisión Los tengo a todos viendo lo que hago, ponen atención Yo vengo rompiendo desde el día que yo empecé Al que estaba en primer lugar rápido lo reemplacé Tengo el flow más fuerte que el efecto de la percocé Lo que fumo como Maluma te hace borrar cassette Rompo las redes, me quiero Quieren las mujeres, siempre le ponen like a la foto que sube el nene Se la pasa mandando mensajes y fotos al DM Con el filtro de perrita y encuerada sin recién Al estilo que yo tengo está caliente como el sol La competencia lo ve por el espejo retrovisor Si antes yo era un hijo de puta pues ahora soy peor Porque ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control 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 Yo quemo caliente como ya salió el sol Ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control Ya tengo, ya tengo ya tengo, ya tengo el control, ya tengo, ya tengo, ya tengo el control Yo quemo caliente como ya salió el sol Benji, I'm Benji, you could never have me So hood, but I'm campy Slim, thick like a grown baby Only bad bitches really understand me Let me repeat Said I'm Benji, I'm Benji, you could never have me So hood, but I'm campy Slim, thick like a grown baby Only bad bitches really understand me If your nigga wanna try and come for me Catch me outside like Bagoli I'm counting my G's and I'm smoking my Bagoli Oops, I'm in Rockley, ain't nobody stopping me Mother of the house, bitch, do I look worried? Nope, cause I ain't though You was such a psycho As if it's some paper, you could try Sabos You could try Sears, yeah, I'm a mean girl Got these niggas in tears, got these bitches trying to steer Young Freddy off the road But y'all looking like a joke And I'm looking hella five to the one O F R E double D I E If you a bad faggot with some bad habits Let me, let me hear you say Let me hear you say Let me, let me hear you say Yeah, if you a bad faggot with some bad habits Let me, let me hear you say Let me hear you say Hold up, let me, let me hear you say You ain't about the town, nigga, shut up Run it up, like the cost of living Now all my niggas hide in the rent ceiling I, I just committed to killing Fuck your feeling, what is the tea, what is the darjeeling Now if you're asking me honestly Them niggas looking like a comedy Cause they off key and underpinning Now all of my bitches going off like a park car Now all of my niggas stay real with a hard R Now all of my faggots looking fishy, get the tartar Too many, wait for us to get it, that's the hard part Benji, Benji, yo, Benji, say tea comes like I'm his Benji Vanessa, Benji, Patel, you bitches spicy like mayo Just a la Valentina, tu eres de puta feo, K.O. Now let me, let me, let me hear you say Let me hear you say <laughs> Let me, let me hear you say
this is a Miss Elliot one time exclusive. Come on, is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. If you got a big, let me search it. I find out how hard I gotta work ya. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. Get to know ya so I can show ya What I'm hurting on ya, like I told ya Give me your number so I can phone ya Your girl acting stink, then call me over Knock on the bed, lay me on your sofa Well, before you come, I need to shave my chop cha You do what you don't know, you will, I won't cha Go downtown and eat it like a won't cha See my hips, big hips, so cha See my butts and my lips, don't cha Just a few pounds in my waist, so ya That's the kind of beat that go rock, ta, ta Slips me so good, I say blah blah blah. Yes. I need a glass of water. Boy, yo, oh boy, it's good to know ya. Is it worth it? Let me work it. I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. You got a big, let me search it. I found out how I gotta work ya. It's your primitive with my knee at number four. It's your primitive with my knee at number four.
easy now, no need to go down Rock that run, that is how we frown Thank you for having me this year for the 20th anniversary of API Pride Pavilion Stage. I just wanted to take a moment to honor our ancestors who came before us, who fought for a safer world, one where we all deserve to exist freely. We would not be celebrating Pride every June had it not been for black and brown trans women and gender nonconforming humans who rose up and rebelled against the militarized police force in San Francisco in 1966 and what would become the Competence Cafeteria Riots and several years later in New York City at the Stonewall Riots in 1969 against the NYPD. We must acknowledge and honor this history and the many black and brown trans folks who have been on and continue to be on the front lines of our collective movements. Unfortunately, as we've seen in the last month, not much has changed as we have witnessed countless black humans murdered at the hands of the police in cities nationwide. And again, more of our black trans sisters have been taken from us by people with the same white supremacist mentality as those killer cops. Today, I honor Marsha P. Johnson, Sylvia Rivera, our living legend, Miss Major. I uplift the names of Tony McDade, Nina Pop, Dominique Remy Fells, Ryan Milton, and the countless black and brown trans folks who have lost their lives to state violence and white supremacy. I see you, I honor you, and I'm committed to fighting for and beside you. No one is free until black trans people are free. All black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. (laughs) 